this morning we're just going to try to do something different. It's going to be a poetry recital. So I hope you've all got your poems and limericks ready. But before we do that, I'd like to say a, f a few words. First of all, I'd like to uh, introduce the campaign team. Where are you? Um, there are six of us. We're meeting weekly to try and plan and move things forward in a number of different ways. So there's Elizabeth Brown, ex-librarian. Colin McGeeock. Isabel McKillop. Maisie, Maisie McRae, star of STV. And the petition signer, Maureen Cannell. Where's Maureen? Okay, that's the, uh, that's the campaign team. We're, we're meeting regularly. So, I'd just like to say our objectives are clear. They are that Glasgow City Council should reopen White Inch Library in its original purpose-made building, not in some other location or in the sports centre. And this is before any consultation or, appraisal, or options appraisal can take place. At the moment, there is no community consultation. The library is closing, and that is that as far as Susan Aitken is concerned. They're giving us the community no choice. They have in fact disempowered us under the, under the umbrella of the Community Empowerment Act. Um, if the building's uses have changed, they should be discussing this with the people who live in Victoria Park area and Scotson Hill wards, and not outsiders and council apparatchiks. Second point, Glasgow City Council should share the outline of venue costs with, with White, White Inch Community Council to clarify the true maintenance and capital costs. Susan Aitken on Twitter has been talking about two million costs. We have received an FOI which says the building is fit to use. What on earth is going on? You ask yourself, or is this just smoke and mirrors from the council? Thirdly, Glasgow City Council should remove White Inch Library, indeed all council venues, from the People Make Glasgow Communities Initiative. You probably haven't heard of this, and I won't go into any detail because of the, it's, it's rather boring, the paperwork. But basically, it depends upon poorly written law, which permits the council to take any, any city asset from its local community under the false mantra of community empowerment. It's currently happening in Vicky Park. Perhaps you'll be saying goodbye to the rugby pitch, the uh, tennis courts or what's left of them after last night's fire, and so on. Um, it's being done under the radar and often without the knowledge of those who are elected to represent us. Our objectives are clear. We have the support of the community councils, many public bodies and the majority of our elected representatives. Already um, the council have five, five prospective tenants for that building. So it's going to happen. They're making it happen now. So be aware of that. We, the campaign team, are taking um, all uh, uh, are taking the following courses of action, all the courses of action we can. We're making representations to our local representatives, some of which are, who are with us and, and properly petitioning the council. We're raising awareness with you, the local community. We're, we're starting to explore legal route, routes to fight back against the council's dubious practices. And we're walk, we're, importantly, we're now working with the broader Glasgow Against Closures campaign to see if we can do something on a citywide basis. You can do your bit too. Write to your councillors, write to Susan Aitken, write to David MacDonald, the chair of Glasgow Life, and show your displeasure. Sign our petition. Attend our protests, are read it elsewhere and in the city. There'll be bigger protests happening on la later on next month. Volunteer to help us out in many ways. And finally, um, if we have to take it to ju judicial review, we need to, we, we're going to have to have a, a crowdfunder, so please contribute a fiver if you've got it.